What is up, Rad Potential YouTube? Welcome to another Rad Formational video on this channel. So, I had a comment a while back asking about breaking in your rotary engine and what are the recommended break in procedures, break in miles, this, that, and the other. So, right off the rip, I'm going to tell you that if you have your engine built by somebody, do whatever they tell you to do. Okay? So, if your engine gets built by X and X and X shop, and they require a 2,500 mile break-in procedure under, you keep it under 4,000 RPM to X miles, this, that, and the other, follow their procedure, don't void your warranty, do all that, okay? So, from there though, we're going to kind of go, and I'm going to tell you a few of the things that, like at different levels of engine rebuild, you might want to consider when you're going to try to break in your engine, or I guess put the engine back together and get the car on the road, Okay? So, first things first, if you're pulling apart your engine to simply do a coolant seal rebuild, right? You're going to replace the coolant seals around the perimeter of the engine, just soft seals. All of your hard seals are going to stay with the engine. Your break-in procedure really does not need to be that crazy, right? You might want to pay more attention to the heat cycles that you're doing versus the actual miles traveled when you're just replacing soft seals. Make sure that, you know, every 50 mile, 100 miles, whatever, right? Just look it over, make sure you're not leaking anything, it's not consuming fluids, etc., etc., right? So, the next bit of your engine, like rebuild of your engine, is you're going to go in and you're going to replace, say, the side seals, the, or I guess not really the side seals, you're going to replace the seals on the rotor, okay? So your apex seals, your corner seals, your side seals, you're going to replace that stuff, right? Generally speaking, if you're going to just replace the seals on your rotor, new springs, etc., etc., you're not going to be replacing the housings and irons. Should you not resurface the housings and, and irons in some way, it's going to take a while for the new seals to bed in to the existing wear pattern on the housings and irons, right? So, typically speaking, I would want to see a minimum of a thousand miles, fifteen hundred miles of like not abusive driving to give those seals time to bed in. Um, that being said, you know, if you're drag racing your car, you need to slap it back together, or whatever, whatever, obviously just send it um, and you can work your way up from there if you're only replacing the rotor seals in your engine, right? Where it gets more complicated for me, um, and I guess we'll, before we go into that section, where it, you know, where that is important as well is if you do have your irons lapped and you replace all the seals, you know, then your break-in period could be less because, you know, you're going to have a better seal right off the rip. Um, but I would still do a minimum of like a 500 to 1,000 mile break-in regardless if you're replacing hard seals inside the engine. That's just me, okay? Now, where it gets more com complicated is if you're going to go ahead and you're going to rebuild your engine and you're putting new bearings in your engine, okay? Bearings can take a little bit of time to break in. And if you're simply pressing a new bearing into your rotor, okay, you know, you're going to replace this guy in here. You're going to replace the stationary gear bearings. You're going to replace that stuff. I would take a much more conservative approach to breaking in my engine because I don't want to tear up the bearings. Okay. So there's a couple different types of bearings you can get for these. You can get like race bearings. They have some that are different sizes. You have RX-8. FD bearings are a little bit different. I think the FDs have a set screw. Um, so I make sure you're getting the right bearings, but typically on an engine that I build, if I replace the bearings in the engine, I'm going to tell you to keep it under 4,000 RPM for a thousand miles. And then I'm going to tell you to keep it under 6,000 RPM for an additional 500 miles. And then work gradually, you know, work your way up after that or, or go shred it. And I'm going to do an oil change at 500 miles and do an oil change at 1500 miles. So Keep that in mind. I mean, that's the general just of breaking in your rotary engine. Now, you could be more scientific, and if you want to do, you know, specific heat cycles or this, that, and the other, or whatever, you know, go right for it. I know for, like, old two-stroke dirt bikes, 
when I would put those engines together. It wasn't really so much of the amount of time or hours or whatever written to break it in. It was like, okay, I got five to 10 solid heat cycles on this engine. I'm ready to go rip it, right? You don't, not seeing any issues. You've shrank, you know, and when the engine cools off, it shrinks. And when the engine gets hot, it expands. You've done that a few times. Everything seems to be good. Ship it. So that's kind of the, the easy peasy thoughts on, on what you should do to break in your engine. Like I said, the most important thing is whoever built the engine, whatever they say, that's what you should do. If you're gonna build your own engine, then obviously you're taking on the risk of sending it too soon. And I would always err on the side of caution and just be a little bit more conservative. Uh, but if you have the ability to rebuild your engine, then you obviously have the ability to fix it if you break it. So um, keep that in mind as well. Now, another thing to note is that you can rebuild rotary engines pretty cheap, I would say. And you can, for lack of a better term, I'll use the term cut corners, but if you find out or if you go on the channel and look, this book right here, I've shown a video about it, um, explains to you all of the tolerances for your parts inside of your rotary engine, i.e. the height and thickness of the apex seals, the height and uh, um, the height and wear pattern or whatever on your side seals, corner seals, etc., and, and inspecting all this stuff. So for all the people who ask me the question of what is the best rebuild kit to put in your engine, my personal opinion is take your engine apart and see what needs to be replaced, then decide on what stuff you're gonna buy because you might not need to replace everything inside your engine. It might be as simple as like a weak side seal spring. You know, RX-8s are notorious for eating up the side seals most of the time. The apex seals in an RX-8 engine are well within spec. So just things like that to check. Now, if you're gonna have somebody else build your engine, right? This is what I tell my friends if they want me to build their engine for them or they know somebody or whatever, right? is that the engine builder is generally the person who wants to take apart the engine they're gonna rebuild. So if you take your engine apart and don't do a good job of labeling everything, that's gonna make an engine builder's job harder, which is then gonna make it, you know, a little bit harder for them, or I guess they'll probably have their own little operating procedure for putting it back together, but them to know what stuff necessarily needs replaced, right? So a few different topics there in that video. Um, and like I said, as always, comment below with any questions um, about any of this stuff. Um, I've got a few videos in a series, um, Rotary Engine Build Secrets, going over stuff like this. Um, as far as like ways to resurface your housings and irons, if you just do a quick Google search, you can find out, you know, some back home or backyard ways to do it. There's shops that offer that service um, to where you can figure that out. There's shops um, that offer putting new bearings in for you. Uh, so if you're going to rebuild your engine and obviously that's going to entail a, a different break-in procedure for the bearings um, Then do that as far as oil to run during your break-in I typically run and everyone's gonna say the same thing just about uh, Like 20 w50 pick whatever brand you want um, In the engine for break-in for 500 miles um, in the winter time And this is when I lived in Indiana in the winter time. I ran 1040 in my cars because I did drive them a lot so it was a, just one oil change through the winter because 2050 oil in the winter is super thick so although rotaries have really hot oil temps which tends to thin out the oil um, that was just my my thoughts there if you live in a hot climate or you don't drive your car very often 2050 seems to work don't run synthetic oil if you have your oil metering pump hooked up as some synthetic oils don't like to burn as well when mixed um, so you'll get like gunk buildup on your, on your seals and excess carbon and stuff like that. So thing to consider, I know that's it's a totally separate topic in and of itself. Um, but that's the, the typical rundown on breaking. Like I said, follow your engine builder. Um, they're going to know what they want or they may break it in for you. Um, uh, if you remember the FD RX-7 that I put together, I broke that engine in, um, per how Charles and the, the guys that built the engine wanted it to be done. So we put a thousand miles on it under 4,000 RPM, and then stepped it up from there for another, well, we put another five, 600 miles on it under 6,000 RPM at low boost. And then uh, I gave it back to Richard and he's been tearing it up. So, and it's been eating, eating it up. And that thing had new bearings, new everything. Every single part in that engine was new, clearance, the whole deal. So 
Um, yeah, I can present you the information. You guys do with what you want. Um, and that's going to conclude this part of the video. So a quick update here at the ranch. I normally don't do this in these videos, but um, the rally car has been giving me some fits as far as like starting right now. And I don't know if it, it's got to be a fueling issue. That's what I've had issues with it before. So I got to figure that out. Um, the Holly Sniper EFI install is happening this week. Get stoked for those videos um, coming up after this one. And then uh, other than that, I've just been tearing it up. I want to give a mad thank you, which this video I filmed on my phone and just kind of trimmed it and uploaded it for you guys. Um, but I want to give a mad thank you to my friend in uh, Louisville, James. Um, he's got an RX-7 I've worked on in the past. And fortunately... He had some computer parts laying around, and he was able to piece together a new desktop PC for me for here. So I'm working on getting that set up today so that I can continue getting content out for you guys. So um, in the comments below, I'll give him a mad thanks because buying a new computer is definitely not something I planned on doing. And as you all know, when you're working on cars, doing cars, real job, you know, this is not a huge, giant enterprise. So... Having to buy a new computer is gonna was was gonna set back some things and push off uploads and this that and the other. So, mad shout out to James for helping me out. Super appreciate it. Um, and you know it, me it means more than you know to be able to keep keep this stuff going. So, thank you guys very much for watching. As always, comment below with any questions. We'll see you guys in the next one. Keep it red.